suffer from a knee injury and is it keeping you from keeping a regular yoga practice? In fact, if you have a knee injury, yoga might actually be a really great exercise for you to keep on a regular basis because it's considered a low impact exercise. So yoga increases your heart rate without putting excess stress on your joints. Hi, I'm Christine. I'm a yoga and wellness coach offering group classes and private sessions, all done virtually from the comfort of your home. Most of my students are in midlife, so I'm used to having students in my classes whose knees have experienced their share of wear and tear, including previous knee injuries. But a regular yoga practice can actually improve your mobility, your balance, and your overall quality of life. And one of the best parts about yoga is that it can be totally customized to your particular needs. You can modify your yoga poses, you can use props, or you can skip specific poses that currently just don't feel good in your body. In fact, I encourage all of my students to pay attention and listen to how their bodies are feeling during the yoga practice and to adjust their practice accordingly. So let's talk about the knee joint, which is what we're here for today. It is the largest joint in our bodies, and it is a hinge type joint similar to your finger. So its main motion is to bend, to flex, and to straighten, to extend. When your knee is bent, it also has the ability to rotate, but not very much. If you have knee issues from a previous injury, you might experience discomfort if you bend your knees a lot. And also if you put lots of pressure on your knees, for example, if you're kneeling down. In yoga, we do have some poses that require us to deeply bend or flex our knee joints and to put weight on your knees. So I want to show you how to modify those poses so you can enjoy your yoga practice and reap all the benefits, even with your bum knees. And for that, props will be your friend. I have many props lined up here for you, and I plan to show you how to use them to make your yoga practice really enjoyable. So let's start by yoga poses that put weight on your knees. So for example, if you're asked to kneel, we'll be in tabletop, or in hero's pose, it might be uncomfortable on your knee joints because you're on a hard surface. So what I invite my students to do is take a bath towel or a blanket, fold it up multiple times, and then use it to cushion your knees. You could also go online and Google yoga knee pads and what will probably emerge is items like these cushion pads that come either in a large rectangle, or wide rectangle, or it sometimes comes in individual pieces, one for each knee. It also saves, saves the, uh, serves the same purpose of cushioning your knees. And I should also mention your yoga mat comes in different thicknesses. So you might consider getting a thicker yoga mat to cushion your knees. But the flip side of that is that it will a thicker yoga mat will make your balance poses a little bit more challenging. So that is the trade off. And I also want to mention if you don't have any yoga blocks around and you find yourself in a yoga class, you can always fold up the back of your yoga mat multiple times and use that to cushion your knees. So that is comes to when it comes to cushioning your knees, which frankly, I recommend to all of my students because just regular life puts enough wear and tear of our knee joints, we might as well take good care of them by cushioning um, the surfaces that we kneel on. Then I wanna talk about poses that require us to put our knee joints into maximum flex, flexion or maximum bend. So let's think about child's pose. It's supposed to be a really relaxing pose, 
But if you are suffering from a bum knees, it might not be as comfortable for you. So let's make it more comfortable. So first of all, once again, we put something underneath our, underneath our knees and shins to cushion our knee joints. Then I invite you to really spread your knees wide, bring your big toes together. And then what is uncomfortable for many people with knee problems in child's pose is that extreme flexion at the knee joint. So to minimize that, we can use some props. For example, we can use yoga blocks and put them behind us, either one or two. Whoops, <laughs> I should start with one and sit down into child's pose. The effect of the block is it raises our butt off the heels and it reduces the amount of flexion at our knee joint. We could also use a yoga bolster with the same effect. We put it across our heels. We sit down on that bolster, much more comfortable than sitting down on our heels. And we come into child's pose. Another alternative could be using either a small roll like this or a tightly rolling up a towel and put it right behind your knees, which has the same effect once again. It reduces the amount of flexion in your knee joint, which makes it much more comfortable for you. And finally, in addition, you could put a, a bolster in front of you for your torso, because that puts less weight on your kneecaps again, making your child's pose much more comfortable for you. The same principle also applies if you're in hero's pose which means you're sitting down on your heels, which might be really uncomfortable for you. So use one yoga block to sit down or put a second yoga block down and sit down. You could also, once again, try and put a rolled up blanket or towel or a little bolster like this right behind both of your knees and then lowering your hips towards the floor. Okay, now that we are taking care of that, let's talk about poses where your knee is bent and maybe rotated out to the side. That might not be comfortable for you if you have bum knees. Let's take a head to knee forward bend one legged where you're bending your left knee, you're placing the sole of that foot on the inside of the right leg, and you're opening up the left hip and letting the knee come out to the side. Once again, I encourage you to use props for that. It might be two yoga blocks to lessen the opening of the hip, which then transfers to the opening of your knee joint. So once again, props will be your friend here. The same when it comes to butterfly pose, where you have both soles of your feet together, you're letting your knees come out to the side. Use blocks underneath the knee joints to support them and to stabilize them. And if that still isn't comfortable for you, skip that pose. You don't need to do it. And when it comes to skipping poses, one of the poses I recommend you skip if you have bum knees is pigeon pose. This is a particularly unstable pose for knees because your front knee is deeply bent but also deeply turned out and you're putting your body's weight onto that joint. So this can be really uncomfortable for people with knee joints and I don't encourage you to do that. Instead, what I would recommend, do the same pose lying down on your back in figure four. So place the right um, ankle on the outside of your left thigh 
Then interlace your hands behind the left thigh and draw that thigh towards your left shoulder. So once again, you're, it has the same effect of opening up your right hip, but it does it without putting any weight on your joints, whether it's your hip or your knee joint. And then in addition, I would invite you to flex that right foot because that will lengthen your calf muscle, which will make the create some tautness, some tightness around the knee joint, which will stabilize it. So that is a great alternative for pigeon toes. And then finally, I want to give you some modifications for some standing poses, in particular, warrior two and tree pose. In warrior two, the typical alignment is that your front heel is in alignment with your back arch. So it's one line. So you're basically standing on a tight rope here. And it, it requires that your both of your hips are externally rotated as well as your knees. This might be too much. So why not adjust the stance for you by walking your right foot over so it might be heel to heel or maybe even wider. It lessens how much you need to open up your hip. The other thing I want you to focus on is that front knee has a tendency to want to lean in, which is not safe for your knee. So I really want you to focus on stabilizing that front knee. So it's pointing in the direction of your second toe and do so by pressing down onto that heel really pressing in your back foot the knee is straight and focus that the foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat and i want you to place the weight on the outside edge of that foot the pinky side of the foot that will stabilize your knee of your back leg so that will be a safe way for you to do warrior two, even if you have bum knees. And then finally, in tree pose, let go of the ego. And instead of putting it like all the way up, keep it down here. Your knee might not like it when it's all the way up. It's perfectly fine to keep it here because that will make your knee happy. So in summary, there's really no need for you to stop doing yoga if you have bum knees. In fact, yoga will be good for you, but it's important that you listen to your body and make modifications to the poses so that they feel good to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And in my video library, I have many other videos, including one, how to do yoga with bad wrists. So that, that might be of interest to you. And I hope you will join me again next time. Bye-bye.